This is what we sort of call, I guess, a Friday afternoon experiment. We thought we would uh, just suspend this thing and then prick it with a sharp knife. A Friday afternoon experiment is an, an experiment you do when you've got, you've got an idea for something that may work, maybe a bit crazy. Here are two of my colleagues, uh, John Middleton uh, on the left and Oleg Makarovsky on the right. One, two, three. just pierced the balloon there, he's just burst it. So you can see immediately the skin of the balloon peels back and releases the water. So that because this bond number is so large, the water is going to drop under gravity. So yeah, so at this point I joined in the fun and I've been playing around uh, in my research with putting high voltages on water droplets to in fact to get them to burst. So a water droplet, if you put a a large enough electrostatic charge on a water droplet. Electrostatic forces between the charges are competing with the surface tension, so those charges are wanting to essentially get away from each other and expand the shape of the droplet. And above a critical um, amount of charge, amount of electric, uh, electric charge on the droplet, the droplet will burst. We had this big voltage source in the lab, so I just wondered what happens if we put 30,000 volts onto a big globe of water. This is exactly a Friday afternoon experiment. What's going to happen if we poke this with 30,000 volts and just, just watch what happens under a high-speed camera? So there's 25,000 volts on the end of that scalpel blade and I'm holding, I'm holding the other end with some gloves and I'm holding it well back because I don't want to get a belt off this. The electric field at that very sharp tip gets large enough that it starts stripping the electrons off the, uh, the molecules, the air molecules, and it starts what's called ionising the air, so the air becomes electrically conductive. And this is where you see a spark. And in this case, although you can't see it on this, uh, on this video, there is a little spark between the, um, between the scalpel blade and the balloon. And you can actually hear it. You can hear this whine. It's a kind of squealing noise. You heard it. Oh, yes. Did you hear that? Yeah. And that's the air breaking down. This is the noise. It's starting to heat up the air, and it's like causing the air to vibrate and causing the air to scream, effectively. So then it goes bang. We didn't really expect the big mass of water to fission because it's too much. We need a much larger voltage to get the big mass of water to split. What we wanted to find was what happened to the little droplets. Would the little droplets have enough charge on them to start fissioning themselves? But it does look like the small droplets are moving away quicker from the big mass of water in this case than they are with the uncharged case. And this is because the, the big droplet has a charge on it. The little droplets have the uh, like charge on it, so in this case it's a positive charge on the big droplet and a positive charge on the little droplets. So that positive charge is repelling and it's causing the little droplets to accelerate away from the, the big mass of water. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I could see it melting. The so in this case, I remember having to uh, to jab the balloon quite hard. So I was poking it and getting some resistance from the scalpel blade. But the balloon didn't burst at the point of the scalpel blade quite peculiarly in this case. So what happens is, so as I was pushing the scalpel blade into the rubber, this is what happens. Bang. So it breaks from the top this time. It breaks from the point where uh, it's been uh, tied up with string. And then finally it breaks on the point of the scalpel blade and it forms this kind of really beautiful looking sort of like mushroom structure or jellyfish type shape. So what we think is happening in this case is that so I've made contact with the balloon with the scalpel. So the balloon is charging up and at this point there's a large electric field developing. So you get a large electric fields where there's a sharp point. So we're getting some electric current now through the top part of this balloon just through this string. The balloon and the string was a little bit wet by this point. And I think this is what happens. This is the electric current that's bursting the balloon. So we've got a big electric field at the top and it's bursting the balloon at this point now. So this is where the highest electric field is on that balloon. You get the highest electric fields where there's a sharp point. What happens now is that then that, unlike the, other, the previous case, what happens is that this, the top part of the, the, the water here inside the balloon is then accelerated by the breaking balloon. You can see it's being accelerated hard down towards the rest of the water and causing these fantastic ripples, these waves on the surface. And then this is continuing out down. So this, the, the water that we've accelerated at the top from the balloon bursting in this way 
is now accelerating out towards the bottom and creating this great sort of mushroom effect. It is good fun and uh, I guess something we, we quite would have wanted to, to kind of repeat this several times to make sure this is a repeatable phenomenon. We did. Um, so we, well, we repeated it twice. Did it again? Yeah. Probably the, the charge may well have had some influence. The charge went to the top. That put additional strain on the, um, on the balloon at the top. And of course, this is, that top is bearing all the weight. And so perhaps the, the, the weight combined with the charge and the strong electric fields at the top caused it to fracture there. And then, bang, it goes. And you, this is, you get this beautiful wave coming down through the balloon. This top part is accelerating hard now compared to the rest of the water and it comes straight through the bottom. That's even better, that's, that's fantastic, this shape. We, we took precautions, by the way, when we were charging this, that Richard Hill uh, was wearing a pair of rubber gloves, and over that he had felt gloves, and he was standing also on a good insulator, because by the time we were breaking these balloons, we had a lot, quite a lot of water on the floor. We've got two experiments now in which we've done bursting the balloon with high voltage, with charge. So now we want to see what happens without charge. So this is kind of, this is the sort of scientific method. We're now starting to see what variables are involved. Uh, without charge, I'm having to stab the balloon quite hard. I remember having to poke the balloon pretty, pretty hard. And it bursts, not at the top, as with the charge. So we're not getting this big electric field because we've got no charge on it now. Bursting in quite a different way. Now the balloon, the water is just is falling as one big mass. It's not forming this kind of jellyfish shape anymore. We had a relatively small amount of time to do the experiments, so we're trying to get data. But just to see that mushroom thing being reproduced twice, I think we can try and follow that up now and understand it better. We got some reproducible results. It's a beautiful shape. It's rather elegant. So can we now just use the simple equations of hydrodynamics and explain that behavior, including the charge, of course, and gravity? It's a, it's a very nice result and totally unexpected. Point that way so that the sharp end, put it flat just, if you like. So just come in from the side when you think it's got yeah. a good bit of momentum. So now, now we're just trying everything that we can try. Well, we've got a, f a few minutes left with Brady and his high speed camera so we just want to try something. We just want to try anything. So the next thing we try is spinning it. So we want to spin up the water and see if we've got, if we've got some water with some spinning around it's got some angular momentum before it bursts. What happens as it's going to burst? So we've drawn some marks on the surface of the balloon here so that when we play the video back, we can work out how fast the balloon is spinning. So uh, yes, yeah, so we've got a little picture of Lawrence there as well to, to, uh, to use as a mark for uh, working out how fast the balloon is spinning. We, we've been doing work on spinning in our levitation system. We've been doing work on spinning water droplets and that turned out to be quite interesting because as we spin up the droplet, the shape of the droplet changes from spherical to First of all, something like um, a rug rugby ball, or if you like, American football, uh, and then it forms a sort of three-cornered hat shape. The physics of this has been studied from a theoretical point of view for over 100 years, and there have been experiments up in the space station on, on spinning droplets. But it turned out as well that uh, our results were of some interest to, to black hole physicists, because black holes have this several properties. They've got mass, charge, and angular momentum. What we thought to do is a very crude experiment. So the, the problem is, you know, inside that balloon's got a lot of water. It's got a fairly large mass. In the time we had, how could we spin it up? Well, the obvious thing to do was to, to sort of turn the balloon round and round and round and twist it. We pricked it with our, with our blade again and just to see what happens. Okay. I had no idea what happened then. So you can see it was rotating fairly rapidly at this point, about one revolution a second, I think, I seem to remember. So it's rotating quite fast, it just doesn't look so fast on the high-speed camera. So it's still, it's still spinning. It's hard to see if there's much difference to, to the other one, to be honest. There's a kind of a cavity there where I've stabbed it. And I suppose it does form a sort of a slightly different shape to the one that was stationary. It's starting, the water is becoming, it's flying out under the action of the centripetal force or the centrifugal force depending on what your reference frame is. So we want to try it again, we want to see if it's reproducible not just some kind of one-off, some fluke of the experiment. So here's Lawrence, we're trying it again. Yeah, so he's kind of testing the weight of it to see if, see if the, uh, the string at the top would hold the weight of the balloon. <laughs> Got it! You did! You did! But now it becomes not an experiment in physics, this becomes an experiment in biology to see what the reaction time of a human, human being is now. I wasn't bouncing, I was just trying to see if it could, 
if it would hold under its own weight. Yeah, he's going to start stepping back any second now. So he's starting, the message has got through to his head that now he's going to get very wet any second now. <laughs> he's got to. I don't think he's still not realised. There you go. So he's just now starting to step back. <laughs> so that's a good one, two seconds after the, uh, the balloon has burst. The message has got through, to, through the, uh, from his eyes into his brain. And now, now he's sent the message to the rest of his body to move away because he's going to get wet. <laughs> so I'm not sure my reaction times would be any better than that. I think that's pretty good reaction time. Now I see the pictures again sitting down at the desk. Yeah, it's so, it's so clear that uh, we ought to repeat it. But maybe we can have to come back to you and do, get you to f do a bit more filming. And it'd be great, we could write a paper together instead of doing these YouTube videos. Will it, as will well it, as doing these YouTube videos. Will I be a co-author? Of course you will, Brady. You, you'll be probably the... Harrod goes before Hill. You, you may be, you help us write it, you can be first author. <laughs> no, but he's, Eves is before Hayes. Oh, yeah, no, but no, no. You're lead author. No, 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 I'm no, 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 no. Maybe no, we no. should write the paper before we argue about authorship. <laughs> Maybe you want to figure it out before we argue about authorship. Yeah, that's that's always the right yeah, thing to do. <laughs> that too.